this chapter in Fairy Tale, I can't necessarily hate on it too much, much because again, it does a lot of things right in a short amount of time. And starting off, we kind of well, we kind of get the whole thing of the whole Makarov killing himself self thing. And of course, we even get to see a little bit of a flashback in terms of how he got his name, which it seems to, or at least like in this chapter, it seems to imply that Mavis was the one to actually sort of name him. Again, their names are sort of similar, so, you know, that is, so, you know, that could be a thing. Also, on top of that, you even get to see, like, that, that even though everybody, like, in this chapter, that they were hurt and stuff like that, we even get to see as though as that we get to see a little bit of a change in change in Loxus. Whereas that instead of him just being like the broad and tough guy, he's more or less just say like he's say he's smiling, trying, say trying to keep it together and so on and so forth. As pretty much we already know that he is super close to his grandfather. So of course like he would hold all that in, not necessarily let it let it leak out and just sort of say, oh say, oh, like, uh, um, uh, we have to use our strategies, and we have to uh, say, and we, say and, we, and we need you to stop this enemy. And speaking of our enemy, I do like how that they kind of come across with all this stuff, or at least like that, they're pretty much like just looking down just nonchalantly of saying like, we've pretty much lost about 70, well, 60, 60 to 70 percent of our, say, of our unit, which really doesn't matter all that much, because again, even though like that, that say even though like those grunts they may come off as strong really that is just a power of numbers thing which really it didn't say which really it didn't do all that much much but just hinder like the lower fairy fairy tale wizards now once that they're all gone they're still really not doing all that much and again like have say it doesn't say it didn't hurt any of the spriggans who are still pretty much kind of caught up in their own little battles battles and whatnot along say, along with what is going on with Rocky. However, some of the bigger, con say, controversies in this chapter seem to come with the whole ending part part of this one, as pretty much we do have the whole Natsu versus Grey thing. And, of course, they're both transitioning, like, into more, uh, into one becoming more, more of a demon slayer, and then, of course, the other one slowly but surely awakening to, like, his fucking E&D powers. And of course, Urza jumping in the middle of that and stopping it, a la, say, a la Kakashi, or also um, fucking Iori from the fucking faded, say from say from the faded KOF um, um, anime, who pretty much did the exact same shit, except for I kind of call more bullshit for Iori's thing because again, he didn't have his power at that time. This case, Urza just sort of is her basic self. And of course, she stops both of the, both of their attacks, but you know she kind of burns and freezes her hand just to say just to say just a little bit, which does kind of snap them both out of it just a little bit, just so that that so just so that they can kind of kind of realize what is say what is going on. And it is something though that Urza's tears were something to actually stop them to sort of get them to realize, oh wait, our master's dead. Or pretty much like, the, say, our guild master is gone. You know, like, things are getting a little bit more serious to whereas that I say, like, we really can't fight, really. But, but, say, but, say, but then again, they were both fighting over something stupid anyway. So there really wasn't too much of a reason to really kind of look at this battle and say, oh, yeah, like, this is like, say, this is like the most badass of badass fights. They're both practically fighting over nothing. So, you know. However, the real question is, is where do say where do we go from here now? Because again, Urza kind of really didn't didn't have too many reasons to fight Eileen, other than the fact that they look similar and that Eileen kind of has a strong a, a strong connection to Urza for some reason. Which as that say, so which is that now we could argue that Urza she does have a bigger reason reason to fight them aside from getting the guild back. You know, because now Makarov is there, or Makarov had to sacrifice himself just to fucking fight them. But then again, you know, that kind of really doesn't make it any bigger or smaller. It just sort of just makes it just seem more of like, well, now we lost somebody serious or like somebody close to us. So now we have to make this fight count. So that is sort of where I'm pulling this from. But until then, that is what I got to say about that. Tell me what do you think about this down there in the comment section. I will catch you on the next John Graves show. Keep watching anime, keep playing video games. I'm out.